All right, this incident happened recently that I really got to talk about. I seen a video up with a young man, you know, committing a robbery. And he walks into a restaurant. He's waving a gun around. He's got a mask over his face and all that. And then I seen a regular citizen or a patron in the restaurant. Someone that was sitting there eating their meals and whatnot. Ended up firing shots and killing the person who had everybody else hostage. But now they got an activist and an attorney. And they're asking for charges to be brought against the person. Listen, man. Let me let, let me get into the story first and then I'm going to say what I got to say. Community activists in Houston are calling for a restaurant patron who shot and killed a robbery suspect during a holdup to be arrested, saying that he went beyond self-defense despite many people calling him a hero. Customers were eating inside a local restaurant when 30-year-old Eric Eugene Washington entered pointed a pistol at all of them, waving the gun around, demanding cash. As he gathered the cash, as the people were on the floor throwing the cash, an armed patron can be seen on surveillance video getting up from the booth he was sitting in and shooting his pistol at Washington multiple times. He was within the law when he fired the first initial shots. But activist Quinnell X, in a news conference in front of the establishment, said, But we believe he went from being a law-abiding citizen to a lawbreaker. Why? Because Washington ultimately fell to the ground and died. The unidentified shooter has not been charged and has cooperated with the authorities. The man's attorney released a statement saying, In Texas... A shooting is justified in self-defense of others and defense of property. Y'all better learn something. The armed diner has been hailed a hero by many people, but local activists said he went beyond self-defense when he fired several more times than he needed to neutralize a threat posted by Washington, who was holding a fake gun, by the way. You do not go and shoot someone over and over and over when they are no longer a threat, said Candace Matthews of the new Black Panther Nation. He was actually in the clear for a justified kill by shooting him like he did the first time when he was no longer a threat. The shooter fired a total of nine shots as Washington was leaving the restaurant. Washington was shot as he was on the restaurant floor after he had been disarmed. I'm hoping the grand jury does something because if they don't, the message that will be sent will be the wild, wild west, says Quanell X. He should be charged with something, saying the man left the scene before authorities arrived and fired even after Washington was unarmed. He noted that he doesn't condone Washington's actions and that he deserves to be punished, but not killed. He also said that the shooter dumped a drink on Washington as he was leaving the restaurant and threw the cup at him. At the least, it's called abuse of a corpse. It's a misdemeanor crime in Harris County. Washington's mother, Corrine Goodman, said that the shooter should have stopped firing as soon as there was no longer a threat. If you had to kill him, I can deal with that. This is his mama talking now. If you had to kill him, I can deal with that. I can come to grips with that. He did something wrong. I understand that, she said. But for him to be shot four times in the back, leaving, and when he falls down, he shoots him four more times, he abused him. A grand jury is weighing whether the shooter will face charges or not. Okay, listen, as far as I'm concerned, after watching this video, shoot his ass. He should have shot him four more times. They said he ended up firing like nine shots and he got hit all those times or whatever. Just the fact, see, I've been robbed before, right? I'm in Miami. 
I'm getting ready to go catch public transportation. I put one foot on the bus doorstep as the door opens, slides away. And I seen the bus driver look at me with big old buggy eyes. And the bus driver hits the gas. So I jumps off the bus. And I'm thinking this is a friend of mine that lives in the neighboring community where I caught this bus at. I feel the cold steel in the back of my head. I'm like, oh shit. So I turns around to say, Shane, stop playing. And I turned around and I looked into the barrel of a revolver. I don't know if it was a 357. It was pretty big and it was a revolver. And the first thing I started thinking, I turned back around immediately and I started thinking, oh my God, what if this person accidentally squeezes the trigger because he is so scared? So I decided I wasn't going to move. And this person is telling me, take your jewelry off, take all your shit off, take your shit out your pockets. And I got both hands in the air. And in the moment, all I could think about was being shot down on the side of the road like a dog. And I said, I'm not moving my hands from in the air because I don't want you to think that I'm going to do anything to you. I can feel you shaking with that gun in the back of my head because he was shaking really hard. I say, you take all my jewelry off if you want them. You go in my pockets and take out whatever you want to take out of my pocket. And I kept my hand in the air and he took all my jewelry off. He, I was wearing two chains. I was wearing like four, five, six rings. And he went into my pockets. He took out whatever he took out. And he walked away with his back turned completely to me. And I could have killed him if I had a gun. Because he never searched my waistline to see if I had a gun tucked. And he never searched, you know, sometimes you might carry a small uh, gun down lower, like by your ankle in an ankle holster. He never searched all that. So if I had one, really, I could have killed him that day. And he never looked back while he was walking away. I say that to say this. The feeling that I got after I was robbed in this manner, I never forgot it. And that was over 20 years ago. And I never forgot it. I have never felt so violated and disrespected in my life. When this young man walked into the restaurant, I'm out at a restaurant trying to get some food to eat on a sunny afternoon. And in you come with your face masked up, waving a gun around. I'm scared. What if you just nervous and you squeeze the trigger and now there's a sad story for my family. I got six kids that won't have a daddy around. I'm their main breadwinner. And now my mama is going to have to cry and go plan a funeral for me and bury me and all this shit. So I'm thinking watching this video and watching this young man operate in that restaurant. I think the patron who carried his legal firearm and used it was in the right. Not only was he in the right when he initially shot him, he was in the right the whole time. And I'm going to tell you why, because for one, he didn't know if that, that was a real gun. And for two, even if when he fell, the gun that he was waving around slid across the floor and was away from him, he does not know if that person still has another gun in his waist that's loaded. And you don't know if any minute now he's going to roll over and start shooting people in the face from laying in that position on the floor. So you shoot till you neutralize the threat. You shoot until you are sure in your mind that that threat is no longer a threat. It's not for someone else who is watching the video to tell me from the outside when I feel like it's no longer a threat. I'm the one that's in the situation. I have to tell you when I feel no longer threatened. You can't watch this video and tell this man when he feels no longer threatened. Obviously, he felt threatened. Now, of course, there's the black and white segment to this, right? And anything that has to do with black and white is always controversial. So the black and white segment to this, it's an elderly white man, it seems, that took the life of a young black man, 30 years old. But here's the thing. He should have made better choices with his life. You put yourself in that position for that to be done to you. If you were off 
working a honest nine to five, flipping burgers at Burger King, stocking boxes or running a cash register at Walmart, over there at Racetrack or Wawa somewhere, getting some money, some legal money, you would still be alive. But you went and gave your life away trying to do bad things and then bad things happened to you. So let's not be the crowd that start talking about justice for. Justice for what? Let's save that energy for somebody that deserves to be defended this way. And I'm sorry that I got to say it this way because I know that his mama is hurting. And sometimes, man, you raise your children the right way. You give them all the love. You teach them all the right things. And they still just go the wrong way. That's just the way that life is. This is a burden that his mama will have to bear. And his other siblings who are now still alive will have to bear. Keep him in your memories because that's the only where he'll be other than in the ground. It's sad, but it is what it is. Leave your comments in the comment section below and tell me if I'm wrong about this one as well. And I'll catch y'all on the next video sometime later. It's Hot Topics TV. I'm out. Peace.